Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today, guys, we're going to come back and revisit an old friend. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P9. This is the original uh, M&P style. It's not a 2.0. Uh, there are countless variations of this pistol that are out there. And one of the reasons why I wanted to come back and revisit this pistol was I don't feel like I gave it a fair enough overview the first time I took it out back in December of 2016. And so this pistol is on loan to us from Stan, the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. And I just want to share with you my experience of shooting this pistol again the second time is I just recently completed a range test on it and if you check my channel you should be able to find it uh, before we get into anything let's just go ahead and check out the uh, the vital specifications on this pistol let you know what you're getting yourself into if you purchase one of these guns all right, so real quick here, guys, key features, basic specifications. You do get three interchangeable back straps that will come with it. We'll check those out here in a little bit. Uh, you do have stainless steel drift adjustable sights in the front and the back. They are three dot style. Uh, two magazines are included, 17 plus one capacity. You do have an ambidextrous uh, slide stop or slide release, whatever you want to call it. You do have a high strength uh, polymer Zytel frame. Uh, stainless steel chassis, barrel and slide. It is melanite coated, and I believe it has a rock, what do you call it, Rockwell uh, 68C hardness rating, which is uh, pretty durable. Uh, you've also got a Picatinny style radio, uh, rail, as well as no thumb safety. Uh, the metal finish is black, semi-automatic, striker fired nine millimeter, uh, barrel length is uh, 4.25 inches, and this one does not have a manual safety on it. Uh, grips are black and sights are white dot, like I mentioned before. Uh, MMPs have been out since around 2005. They're kind of an evolution of the SW99 pistol, as well as the old Sigma series pistols. And uh, what I really like about this gun is it does have a feel and it's got some lineage connected to the Smith & Wesson SD9VE, which was another one of those pistols that I had a bit of a negative experience with. I got one that had a bad guide rod. You know, any pistol can have its lemons that are out there. It's just something that happens. But the feel, the finish, the trigger, very similar between the SD9VE and the original M&P9. So let's just go ahead and get into the pistol. We'll talk about the ergonomics, the design, the features, uh, the fit and the finish. We'll also do a quick little disassembly and show you what's under the hood. Uh, you know, this is a very viable competitor to the uh, Glock 17. Uh, you know, completely different trigger feel, obviously different grip angle, and so on. One of the reasons why I really wanted to cover this pistol again is because you can pick these up on the used market or the law enforcement trade-in market for $300, $279. Especially if you don't mind getting a 40 or a 45, you've also got options too to pick them up even cheaper. Uh, brand new, I'm seeing a price of around $415 on Bud's guns, and that does come with the uh, with the two mag magazines. Uh, all right, so we're just going to go top to bottom, front to back. What can you expect when you pick one of these up? What is the experience like? And so on. We'll also show you some range footage when it comes to shooting it. So you're going to get a quick uh, but thorough overview of this pistol. Okay, so first things first, you might notice it doesn't have any kind of scalloping or serrations on the front. So if you're the kind of person that likes to do one of those press checks, probably not going to happen. Um, it is flat up on the top and you do have the three dot sights. Now, unfortunately, I did have the little front dot sight pop out during my second range test. This thing's had a couple hundred rounds uh, through it. Does that mean that this gun is complete junk? No, that can happen. I've had sights come off of guns before, so we'll contact Smith about getting a uh, replacement sight. Uh, Smith & Wessons do come with a lifetime warranty. I think a lot of people don't realize that, and that's something that you need to take into consideration when you're buying a pistol, especially if you're planning on putting a lot of rounds through it. Uh, you do have a nice little cut here in the slide. And it goes into a, a type of scallop is what I like to call it. Almost kind of looks like a like a serrated blade style uh, type of serrations in the top of the slide, which really helps you get a good grip on it. Um, I do top charge this firearm. It's very easy to get a good purchase up on the top of it. Makes it very easy to manipulate. Uh, you do have a takedown lever uh, halfway through the frame here, and we'll show you how to actually take the gun apart here in just a minute. It's very easy to do. Um, you do have the ambidextrous, like we mentioned before, slide stops, slide releases, whatever you want to call them. I find them a little difficult to use as a slide release. And again, like I said, I tend to top charge the firearm when I uh, load that first round. Uh, standard, what is it, 1913 Picatinny style rail. So you can put all of your accessories out there. There are a ton of accessories out there for this gun. Aftermarket triggers, sights, extended capacity magazines, modifications. You can do whatever you want to this gun. I'd say, you know, say next to the Glock 17, you've got just as many options and the uh, sky is definitely the limit. Uh, trigger, very similar to the SD VE. By the way, this firearm was safety checked prior to us filming, so you don't have to worry it is in fact empty. Let's double check it again. Right? Always good to be safe. Uh, the trigger itself is set at six and a half pounds. It's a bit gritty, a bit plasticky. You can hear that clicking going on. But we'll just go ahead and run it through. It will tense up. There isn't a definite wall, in my opinion, like what you get with the Glock. 
but it will tense up and then it does break. I'll show you the reset on that real quick. It's about a half an inch, I suppose, and that's about it. And then you've got that break. Uh, me, I am completely used to this trigger just because it's so similar to the SD9VE, which is one of my favorite guns. Um, SD9VE, in my opinion, is a little bit more like a Glock 19 sized firearm. This is kind of in between a 19 and a 17, your MP9s. You've got a nice, generous uh, trigger guard down here, which would make it easy to fire this weapon with gloves on. Um, as for your magazine release, it does look reversible. I guess I didn't get a chance to test that, but I think you can reverse it, especially when you look inside at the uh, mechanism that uh, that the magazine release is hooked into. Press the button. Magazines just come right out. No issues at all. As for getting a purchase on the firearm, um, I, whatever grip size this is, is absolutely perfect. It's, it's, it's kind of a nice rectangular bar style, and then it swells out in the back a little bit. Uh, the texture is not overly aggressive. I think you could probably, inside the waistband, carry this thing, and this would not rub to the point that it would irritate your skin. Um, I tend to wear two layers when I do an inside the waistband carry myself. But again, you can get a great purchase on it. And you've got some texture where it matters the most, Smith & Wesson logo down towards the bottom. Uh, you have the same kind of texture on that magazine release also. Uh, the magazines themselves, I'm assuming that they're made by Smith & Wesson. Many times, magazines come from like Metgar. They're made in Italy. Magazines look very similar to the SD9VE. I don't know if they're compatible. I don't have my SD9VE with me at this very moment. 17-round uh, capacity. Uh, they do have some great followers up on the top. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're perfectly fine for what they are. Again, I would just assume that they are manufactured by Smith & Wesson. All right, check out the other side real quick. You've got a fairly good size um, extractor. Um, it's definitely gonna do its job. The injector, the ejector's inside. Up on the top of the slide, we do have a little port that you can view in to make sure that the firearm is loaded or unloaded, which is a nice little feature to have. All right, and so real quick here before I forget, uh, the two additional grips that come with the pistol, you get three total. You've got a large and you've got a small. The large is significantly thicker than the small, obviously. You do get some additional beaver tail molding up there, which is nice. Gives you a little more hand support, especially if you're one that really rides high up on that slide. The small does not have that additional beaver tail support, but there is molding in the frame of the pistol anyway that'll take care of you. Uh, so either way, you're gonna be able to make it uh, uh, work for you. Uh, and again, it's nice to have that kind of adjustability in your pistol. Otherwise, very, very comfortable. So let's just talk about the, uh, the shooting experience real quick. What is it like when you actually shoot this firearm? Okay, in terms of accuracy, I was very surprised with how well I shot it. Of course, it's been about three years since I took the gun out, and I've fired many, many guns since that point. Again, the trigger, I was totally used to it because of the SD9VE. Um, I was producing a group that was probably about three inches all the way out to 25 yards, three inches max. I mean, I was putting quite a few of them within a nice tight group, probably within about an inch and a half of the bullseye. Uh, as you can see in the picture here, I did have a couple flyers. It always happens. It always seems like when I go out to 25, I get overly confident or my front sights start to waver a little bit, but still, I mean, I kept everything with what I would consider to be a perfect uh, zone for self-defense for, uh, you know, this type of center mass shot that you might need for self-defense. Uh, moving on, actually shooting the firearm at the range. You know, I shot the different various steel targets and Really low recoil, uh, very, very easy to manipulate the trigger, very easy to get a great grip on. I've got medium sized hands and uh, the pistol did fit my hands perfectly. And really, I mean, I had no trouble with rapid shots, follow up shots, and you know, with that 17 plus one capacity, you've got pretty much what you need to, uh, to get through a variety of targets. Okay, so for disassembly, we're gonna go ahead and zoom out here a little bit. All you gotta do is just ensure that you have an empty magazine, pull back the slide so it locks into place. Go ahead and take your magazine out. There's a little tab that's gonna be underneath the uh, ejector here that you need to push down. You can either get a little screwdriver and push that down, or you can get your pinky in there and you can push it down, whatever works for you. Um, that little tab is gonna have to come down uh, before you take the slide off, and that's pretty typical. I remember seeing that on the uh, M&P Shield. So my cleaning kit, I like to keep just a little, little screwdriver on standby, so all you gotta do is just grab that tab and push down on it a little bit. There we go. So you can see where it is in there. It's this little tiny guy right there. It looks like a little wire, okay? Then after that, all you have to do is pull down on the takedown lever, as such, and then go ahead and release the slide. The slide will come right off. You can check out the internals. Again, the design, very similar to your Glock style pistols. You've got four contact points where your slide's gonna run across. Again, you have a matte black finished uh, stainless steel chassis inside for durability. Uh, Zytel polymer. This one's a little oily, and that's just because I got done cleaning it. I still need to go over it with a cleaning patch and get that taken care of. 
But as you can see, uh, very, very typical of the design that we see in a lot of guns these days. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, underneath here, we do have a captive guide rod, which means it's not going to shoot the spring off at you when you take the guide rod off in the spring. You do have a nice stainless steel guide rod. I'm pretty big on that. Um, the uh, SD9VEs have a polymer guide rod, which is really flimsy. It's kind of a let down on that gun. I've since replaced mine with a stainless steel setup. And you've got your barrel. So you've got that browning style action. Very easy to reassemble and put back together. Inside of the slide, again, somewhat Glock-esque in its design. Just like every gun out there these days, it seems like. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, cater to the Glock fanboys. I've got Glock, Smith & Wesson. I've got various brands of pistol. And um, again, this is just uh, one of my favorites. Okay, so we'll go ahead and reassemble by just putting the slide back on. Again, reassembly is always a little bit tricky when it comes to doing this on camera. So you want to go ahead and make sure you've got your lever down all the way. Go ahead and put your slide on. Okay, just pull back. Slide lever will cock back into place. Now go ahead and lock the slide back open again. And you can take that little wire that we pushed up originally, that we pulled down originally. Just go ahead and push it up so you can no longer see it down there in the magazine well. Okay, go ahead and release that slide. Put a magazine in. Okay, just check it, ensure that it is in fact unloaded, and uh, go ahead and dry fire. One thing I want to check here real quick, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, we'll fire without a magazine, which is always a good feature to have in my opinion. And uh, they do say capable of firing with the magazine when removed. So again, your M&P 9 1.0, probably one of the best deals in a semi-automatic 9mm pistol out there in the market right now. Um, this thing performed flawlessly. We had zero issues with it whatsoever. We shot both 115 grain American Eagle ammo as well as 124, 125 grain uh, Federal American Eagle. Can't remember exactly. Had no trouble with it whatsoever. I consider buying one of these as a primary carry. I'd consider it as a bedside gun. Um, you know, just a nice first uh, first pistol to learn how to shoot on. Make a great first gun for somebody getting into the into the pistol world. And it's something to consider. So stand at SS Pond. I want to thank you for loaning us this pistol. Had a great time with it at the range. Uh, we got it all cleaned up. We'll get it back to you here as soon as we wipe it off. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, make sure that you like or subscribe. Check out the channel. We got a ton of content out there for you to watch. And uh, as always, guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. Uh, oh, yeah. And don't forget, uh, make sure you check out Caliber Corner. That is a gun podcast that we do on Thursdays from 5 to 7 Central, uh, 6 to 8 East Coast time on YouTube, as well as uh, gunchannels.com. And uh, as always, make sure you support guntube.org. All right, so have fun, be safe guys, and we will talk to you soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.